Dylan, let me begin with you. We got to look at Pichai's prepared remarks uh, yesterday. What does it tell us about his strategy going into this hearing and the kind of messaging he wants to put out there? Well, what it tells us is that the tone coming out of Google has changed. You know, in the course of the last few years, as various tech executives have been asked to come to Washington, Google has really not cooperated. Uh, Larry Page, who's the CEO of Alphabet, Google's parent company, refused to even show up for a hearing. It was just an empty chair. Sundar Pichai, this is his first showing on the Hill. All of the prepared remarks, if you read between the lines, what you see is a very cooperative tone, a tone that sort of says to lawmakers, look, we are an American company first. Uh, uh, we uh, uh, respect Congress. We respect the work that Congress is trying to do. We support federal privacy regulations, basically striking a cooperative posture to try and signal to lawmakers we are aware of the problems that you guys are concerned about. We are working on those problems, and we are ultimately a force for good in society, and we are willing to work with you to make sure that that's the case. Yes, yeah, so it's obviously going to be a big question, Scott, about the values that Google is espousing versus mm -hmm. its uh, importance on the, on the bottom line. But what's at stake for Google here when they uh, are coming under this kind of scrutiny? Obviously, a big player in the market in their, in their valuation. But at the end of the day, um, from a regulatory perspective, how significant and what's at stake for Google here? Well, whether or not Google gets broken up uh, and what kind of is privacy. Is that a possibility? I believe it is. I think the world is what we make of it. I think the most dangerous thing about Google and something that probably won't get a lot of attention because it'll digress into the circus around what type of content or what types of voices they're squelching, which, by the way, is just not true. These people aren't, don't lean left. They don't lean right. They lean down. They're capitalists well before they're Democrats or Republicans. But what should happen and where the discussion ideally will go is whether the most important process in human history, when you translate your intentions to action three billion times a day, should one company control 93 percent of that? So the mood around Congress, the mood, the gestalt towards Google could end up in decisions whether or whether or not it's broken up. As things stand right now, do you think Capitol Hill views Google as an ally or an adversary? Yes. I, I, like, there, this, this is, this is going to be, a, these guys are going to get schooled. They're outgunned. Google has mm -hmm. between 50 and 100 lobbyists, depending on how you uh, classify them. Sundar Pichai is very disciplined. Plus, he walks in without 12 hollow, I'll do better apologies behind him that, mm. that he didn't live up to. He's very disciplined. He's very thoughtful. He's very measured. And he's up against individuals where 4% of our elected representatives have a background in engineering and technology. And that 96% who don't will be on full display today. All right. So, <laughs> so Ron, let me read this to you. from This is from the uh, chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, uh, Bob Goodlatte, announcing uh, the hearing. And when he made that announcement, this is what he had to say. Online technology is an integral part of most Americans' modern lifestyle. However, the technology behind online services like social media and internet search engines can also be used to suppress particular viewpoints and manipulate public opinion. So Google has pretty much denied that. Facebook has denied that. But is it now a factor that lawmakers are really putting pressure on these organizations or these companies, rather, to find out uh, if they are kind of skewing their searches. Yeah, I would agree with Scott. I mean, it's a non-issue. I mean, it, it, anybody who spends any amount of time online knows that you can find almost any viewpoint uh, with a Google search if your Twitter feed, and I don't know why the president was complaining about Twitter. He uses it more than anybody else, but uh, or Facebook. You could find anything. And, you know, if you go back to the old days of email, by the way, we used to get these, you know, spam messages that were totally phony from both parties yep. on a daily basis. There's very little evolution in that process, and I think that the information, whether it's right or left, is readily available available to anyone and everyone, no matter how you cut it. The bigger issues to me with respect to Google, less so on the monopoly front than, than, than Scott views it, are, are the privacy issues mm. and then also their behavior in China should they go forward there. I think that's a very big issue that you know does need uh, bear more scrutiny than, than it, whether or not they lean right or left. I so, think that's a silly uh, argument. Midwin, let me ask you about some of the legality issues that Google and other companies are facing. Um, the proliferation of uh, you know hate speech, uh, in some cases extremist messaging on Twitter, and even videos that are sometimes very disturbing. What legal pressure could they be coming under to try to, I don't know if the right word is regulate, but at least control uh, the proliferation of that? And is that something these companies want to take on? They're under tremendous pressure to handle it or right. to do something about it, but at the same time, you kind of rub up against First Amendment and, and free speech issues. Well, I, I think it's important for companies to take on this particular issue. I think we have all seen in this country a rise in hate crimes, a rise in hate speech. And I 
I, as I always say, the First Amendment is not absolute. You know, there there are carve outs and, and you know, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. There are many there are many ways that speech is curtailed. And when it comes to inciting violence, when it comes to uh, hate, hate speech, I think that Google and all these other companies need to be at the forefront in making sure that they are curtailing this. Now, with respect to whether or not uh, when you put in a search, you get a sort of conservative leaning or whatever. I wonder whether or not that is being sort of swept aside along with websites or articles that are completely false, that are completely, you know, fake news. And I yeah. know that Facebook had a big problem with that. And I wonder whether or not that is what's being encapsulated in this sort of definition of conservative websites that I, are sort I, of I, allegedly being ignored. Yeah, I wonder if Sundar gets very technical in explaining how Google functions if members uh, of the committee are going that, that, to understand I, I, it. And I, I that's doubt it. that they will. Remember yeah. during the Facebook hearings, you know, it, it was actually frightening to see how, how much, how little our elected officials that's understood and that's why they about would, how That's why he would do it. I mean, I think one of the interesting <laughs> things He could just about, bog down the whole hearing. Well, in when you watch the Facebook hearings and you saw that every person who was, you know, uh, in, in, in interviewing Mark Zuckerberg and Sheryl Sandberg had absolutely no, no idea. idea. Yeah. how Facebook worked or any other yeah. internet medium it was it's just such a glaring example of of our policies being so far behind our progress yeah and that's exactly the segue that I wanted to get to you uh, Dylan back on this uh, testimony that Mark Zuckerberg had what should pitch I take away from Mark Zuckerberg's previous testimony in terms of how she how he should handle this hearing uh, what kind of information he should kind of volunteer or how he should uh, address some of the issues that we just discussed well, look, I, I think the point that was just being made about the sort of, you know, uh, uh, ineptitude of Congress when it comes and of lawmakers when it comes to, frankly, the Internet uh, and, and social media really works in his advantage. You know, we sort of look at a hearing like this as sort of the culmination of congressional pressure on Silicon Valley as though this is going to be a huge moment uh, uh, in, in, in which, you know, the tech CEOs have to prove their mettle. What often ends up happening is that what gets exposed is just how incapable Congress is of actually uh, uh, dealing with this problem. The, the idea that somehow a group of lawmakers who don't even fully understand the way the Internet works are going to come together in this highly politically divisive time and pass substantive regulation, to me, is sort of laughable on its face. And so I think the, the strategy for Pachai has to be come in there, act cooperative, uh, uh, give lawmakers more or less what they want to the degree that you believe that you can, uh, and, and get through this. Because what Mark Zuckerberg has shown is he's survived more than two years of controversy, more than two years, uh, very often, of Facebook shooting itself in the foot. Right. Google is much more capable in terms of understanding how to manage the narrative around their company. If he can survive a day on the Hill, I think Google is going to be just fine. All right, so Scott, let me ask you about something that both of you guys brought up, which is Project Dragonfly. This is yeah. Google's attempts to uh, work, I guess, with the Chinese government to get a foothold in China. But under that pressure, they may have to censor some of the searches. Sure. Uh, and it's obviously drawn a lot of criticism for the company. What, it, what responsibility does Google have? I mean, can, can they say that, you know, can they ignore the Chinese market? Mm -hmm. And if they decide to go there, um, are we being a bit hypocritical that other American companies are going and complying by Chinese law? Is this something different because it, uh, it means Internet, it's about freedom and, and, and values that we cherish, as the company said in its statement? I think every tech CEO wakes up in the morning and looks in the mirror and says two things. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. President. I think they're all running for president. And two, hello, <laughs> CEO. Hello, CEO of most valuable company in the world. And no company can be the most valuable company in the world for, uh, for uh, an extended period of time without being in China, fastest growth econ growing economy in the world. A fair question from Congress would be, you seem comfortable trying to do all these gymnastics to offer a search engine in China, yet you seem repelled by the notion of working with our armed forces around artificial intelligence. Mm. That is a fair question. Now, their obligation, their obligation is to wake up every morning and create more earnings for their shareholders. They're not failing. It's we who are failing to elect representatives who hold these firms accountable and hold them to the same standards we hold MSNBC and we've held every other media company 
This company is not held to the same standards as traditional media firms because of legislation, because of our gross idolatry of innovators. But at the end of the day, their obligation is more profits. They're doing their job. We're not doing ours. Can I stick at one historical sure. point? You know, there, there was a period of time going back to the early days of, of Russia when Lenin took over that Armand Hammer, who once ran Occidental Petroleum, was allowed to do business in Russia for a good 60 or 70 years. PepsiCo did swap deals with um, Russian beverage companies, uh, alcohol companies, even despite the fact that the Cold War had raged for years. So there are times when the U.S. government looks the other way when corporations do business with a potential actual or potential adversary. Adversary. This, however, does get to some of the more fundamental issues that we deal with respect to, with respect to freedom of speech and suppression. And so in, in a certain sense, it's similar to what yeah. we've seen in the past, but it's, uh, there are also some very different components. Yeah, fascinating insights. I appreciate all of the insights, uh, uh, and we'll see how this all plays out in a couple hours from now. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.